So we've done the part where we define the data types uh, for our uh, for our parser. It's now time to go and define some building blocks for this. Now this is where things get things get interesting, really. So let's define a var parser. A var parser is a parser that I'll define it as a function. Is a parser that uh, let's start with the test actually. So if we do var parser dot parse and pass in any alphanumeric set of characters like a1 uh, now we expect this to to return a var name a1 okay i'll print this so that we can inspect the value that comes out of this and in terms of defining the parser what we want is just to parse it's it's, uh, it's good that the library provides us with some uh, utilities to um get one or more of a particular thing so we can say one or more of uh, and then we can go for i'm actually going to check my notes to see if uh, yeah it's one or more of is the api and then we can combine parse alphabet which takes any letter no matter if uh, uh, lowercase of or um, or uppercase so alphabet is here or a parse digit so what this uh, will uh, parse and we can actually run this okay we're, we're currently parsing a1 into an array containing characters like a and one which is a good good place to start and then ideally we want to join these characters into a single word right so if i do parse dot join which is another primitive we can do exactly that so run join here we go we're returning a1 which is the name of our variable and now the only thing that is left to do is to take this particular value and transform it into something else uh, and we want to just wrap it into i'll, I'll show you what the the extended version of it is so we can do var name dot new and then pass in name and here we are okay there's a there's a shorthand we could be using here to make things a bit more a bit shorter but that that's very readable so we'll leave it like this right so the first building block is actually there and we can try to break it for example if there's a white space in front of the string then that will break um, the parser that's fine because at the moment we're not looking into having flexible parser just yet we're just interested into uh, defining parsers that work as expected on the token we we provide them so if i start with a parenthesis for example this will this will also break this will only work when we have a sequence of alphanumeric characters and if for example you wanted to have only like this allows a an expression like one s for example if you are not okay with having a digit as a first character in your in your parser then you can try and think about how you would change this to first read an alpha an alphabet um, character and then only after that read one or more uh, alphabet four digit uh, um, characters so now that we have uh, accomplished the first the first step let's move on and define a parser for our pattern i'll define it as pattern parser and again i'll rely on the on the test we have here which is uh it might be any sort of combination of dots and stars and what we expect to get out of this is a pattern containing the string itself so dot star dot 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 and then star let's go on and define this so pattern parser uh, this might uh, look quite similar because we are joining again and we want one or more of something in this case we can use one or more of parse.char uh, which will capture a dot in particular in this case or a char of star and you can see here, here how the composability really comes in handy in defining this more and more complicated parser right and if I run this now, I get back an array of dots and stars. If I prepend this with a parse.join, 
then we go back to the string itself and finally we want to transform this into we want to transform transform the pattern into a pattern dot new pat uh, sorry wrong parenthesis here so curly braces and again there we go so we're happy we're happy with this so, so far so good final uh the final piece of building block for our parser is the one that interprets coordinates so we give it a string containing coordinates of the form two comma one and we want to see a tuple containing two and one and these are numbers so integers okay let's define this so that chord parser and this will be this will be what okay so this is when we actually employ the the powerful do parse um, macro which will allow us to interpret a sequence or better to parse a sequence of characters right so the first character will like we'd like to discard it's a it's a, uh, an opening uh, parenthesis we'll just say parse dot char open parenthesis the second character or the second set of characters we're actually interested in is the first it's the x coordinate of our of our tuple so we'll do parse dot int because lucky enough the library defined a very handy integer parser notice that because we are talking about game of life and the grid is on integers this is exactly what we want we're not interested in in floating point or, or um, numbers with decimal digits we then have a comma which also we want to just discard so the underscore represent the fact that we want to discard that characters I can actually do string uh, character and just uh, say there's a comma here and then again we're going to parse the second coordinate which is our y and finally the closing parenthesis which is this one and to to finish the parsing we just return a parse constant which is as we were saying a way of returning sort of yield all the gathered values into a data type that can then be used so we'll just parse constant into the tuple x y let's see how far this gets us there we go yeah just as easy as that so this is uh, if i do if i put the class of this of this object for example we can see this is a tuple of uh, integer 32 integer 32 as expected so we're on the right on the right track to define a fairly um, uh, complex uh, parser starting from these building blocks so we're good we're good to go to the to the next step i wanted to highlight how on purpose i made it so that these parsers are not too flexible for example if you add a an extra space after the common comma this will break things but the good news is we can easily enough um, define a white space uh, oof, a white space parser that will take one or more spaces of parse dot char space and with something as simple as this we can make our uh, parser very resilient to white spaces for example so if i say you're going to read a an integer sorry a comma and then a random number of or any any number of uh, white spaces i can just say white space and if i run this again uh, just a moment coordinate parser Uh, we also need to make sure that the that the one uh, that the um, uh, that the parser is okay with just no spaces. So if I put one space, things should be alright. If I put two or many, things will still be parsed alright. But also I want to do make it so that um, having one is also okay. So if I do uh, 
if I go back and interpret this as rather than one or more which actually requires that to be uh, at least one I can use many and many is another primitive of our library that reads parse dot many of and I think many of is actually okay with no spaces there you go so no spaces everything is fine I add some still everything okay is okay so this white space is a is an optional one right and if we want to build on more resiliency we can say there might be some space between X and the uh, and the comma that's just fine and so on and so forth uh, okay let's say we're happy with uh, this level of resiliency for our expression we can move on and think about how we're going to be parsing show so let's define a show parser but before we do that let's define a test for it 